Hello everyone, I am making a video because I got a message um, from Lizzie and Lizzie writes, I think I'm just a little confused about the setup for the outline, talking about the rebuttal speech, I assume. Should all the main points be opposed to what we believe? Let's say I'm wrong about Cuomo and masks. If I believe masks don't protect us, then my main points will be facts about those that believe they do work. No, okay, here's the deal. Um, good question, Lizzie. Lots of people get this confused because what I'm trying to get you to do is write a rebuttal, not a persuasive speech. So step one, you need a policy. So if you wanna do something with Cuomo and masks or wearing masks in New York State or whatever, you have to find a policy argument. If you don't know what a policy argument is, you need to go back and watch the video, I think it's the second one, about how to do a stasis slip. But a policy is some kind of rule that is being imposed and enforced for everyone. It can be state, it can be federal, it can be local, it can be an organization, but it has to be the same rule for everyone. So for example, whether or not people should recycle is not a policy, right? Like, it'd be great if people recycled, that's not a policy question. Now, if you if there's some kind of like legislation or policy, uh, for, like, for, so for example, the New York State recently put the five cent um, fee if you didn't bring your own bag to the grocery store. You could, you could say that you want that law repealed. It would be kind of stupid to argue for the law considering the law already passed, but you could make the argument that five cents isn't enough to curb the waste of bags. So you want to make a policy, you want the policy to be increased to 50 cents a bag. It's always helpful to find an actual policy that's being debated, whether that's in the New York Senate, whether that's federal, whether that's something easy, like who should be nominated for the, I mean, who should be the Democratic presidential nominee? That's a policy because it's only one choice and it applies for everyone. So whether or not you like Biden as the nominee, if he gets picked, that's the nominee, right? We, we, we can't come up with policies that are like, everyone should vote because it's not a policy, right? You can't enforce that. All right, so then once you have the policy, you need to look at the reasons why your opposition supports the side they support. So for example, if I wanna write a policy that, Clo that, um, that, that Cuomo should repeal the mask law, right? This, this, this law that if you go into public, like grocery stores and stuff, you're only allowed to go in the grocery store if you wear the mask. Let's suppose I want that repealed because currently it's a law, right? So it's already on the books. So I'm not gonna argue in favor of it. That would be dumb, it already happened. Why would I argue in favor of a law that's already on the books? But lots of people don't like the law. So it's perfectly fine to do a speech that's like, I argue that the mass law should be repealed. Okay, instead of just arguing why I'm right, I go and I look at why the opposition is wrong. So I look at people who support the mask laws. I look at arguments from Cuomo. I look at arguments from, I have to find the reasons why they think they're right. And I have to find good reasons. We're not gonna find shitty straw person crap arguments and then be like, they're wrong. So um, let me pick a policy I don't believe in to show you what I mean. So I do not believe that Trump should be should be elected president, right? I just don't, like he should absolutely, no one should elect Trump president, okay? Um, but if I wanna write a speech about that, I'm not just gonna give you all the reasons that I don't think you should vote for Trump. Instead, I'm gonna look at all the reasons that Trump supporters think they should vote for Trump. I'm not gonna pick because he's a white nationalist, right? Like, I'm not gonna stand up and be like, nobody should, the people who support Trump are wrong because they're all a bunch of racists. Now, I believe that some of them are a little bit racist, right? And I'm also not gonna be like, uh, Trump supporters wanna vote for Trump because they think that he's um, he's a, a, a leader, but he's a, he's a shitty human being. You know, you're not gonna shit talk the opposition. That's not productive. Instead, I'm gonna ask myself, okay, what are the good reasons Trump supporters have for voting for Trump? Okay, well, number one, maybe they uh, want, they want the policy is Trump should be president, they think, because uh, he's a great businessman, he made a bunch of money, right? There's one number, there's one, okay? Uh, Trump should be president because he has really fixed the economy. Great, there's another one. Uh, Trump should be president because he believes in America. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm gonna look at all their reasons. And then I'm gonna pick a couple according to the three main points because I need a main point where it's fact for fact. So this one's easy, right? Use the they say, I say, right? So they say Trump should be voted for, they, Trump, they say Trump should be elected in 2020. I say that Trump should not be elected 2020, right? I don't have to argue in favor of Biden. I don't have to argue in favor of Bernie Sanders. I don't have to do anything. My only job is to deconstruct their argument, all right? So they say 
Trump is a self-made billionaire who will be good for America. I say, right, this is fact for fact. I say um, Trump is not a self-made billionaire, right? That's factually inaccurate, okay? He did not make, um, he did not, he did not run good businesses. All right, so there you go. Then there's another one that's called the Stasis slip. Then there's another one that's called the turning the tables. For each one, you have to find a different argument from your opposition. They say this, and then you have to practice the argumentation strategy that I go over in the three videos. And then once you've done that, right, your main points are all counter arguments. They say, I argue. They say, I argue. I don't want just reasons why you're right. If I get a main, main if I get a speech that's just, here are three reasons why you shouldn't vote for Trump, ABC, I'm gonna send it back to you and go, this is not a rebuttal speech. This is just you arguing. This is just you saying you're right. I'm not interested in you standing up and saying you're right. Anybody can stand up and say they're right and have lots of good arguments. But you're not listening to the opposition. You're not arguing the things that they're arguing. So you're just talking past each other. That doesn't do anybody any good. Like, I don't know. If you got in a fight with your roommate about who washed the dishes last, you can just stand up and start talking about what a bad roommate they are. But it's not going to solve the problem of who's going to wash the dishes. So it's pointless if the argument is about the dishes to make the argument about something else. It'll make, I mean, yeah, you can, you can be right, but you won't get anything accomplished, which is all I'm interested in, right? I'm interested in productive disagreement. That is what I am teaching you. There are other things that other people can teach you about how to be right and how to be righteous and how to stand up for your morals and all that stuff. Not the assignment. So don't do that. All right. Find the, the reasons why the opposition thinks they're right. Pick good reasons, right? Pick reasons that you believe a rational, decent human being also has, okay? And then say why they're wrong using your argumentative logics. You're turning the tables, your stasis slip, and then your easy one, which is just they have a fact. Here's why that fact's incorrect. But again, pick a good fact. Like, I can understand why people think Trump is a self made millionaire. Like, he was on that show about millionaires giving people money, for example. I, however, have facts that contradict that fact, right? That's easy, they're two sets of facts. They're both right. I mean, that's the thing about facts. Like if you're debating the fact, it's a debatable fact. How old Trump is, is not a debatable fact. It's not a question of fact, it's just a fact. So we're not gonna bother with that. But like, for example, whether or not Trump is morbidly obese, that's a great question of fact. I don't know why it matters, but um, it's been a huge debate lately ever since Pelosi called him morbidly obese. So you're always looking for good reasons and you wanna use the strategies that I lay out in the video. And then of course, once you've got your main points, the rest of the speech is evidence. So they say Trump is, um, is so if I wanna, let's say I wanna, let's say I'm, I'm pro-Trump, like you should vote for Trump. Okay, well my, the opposition says you shouldn't vote for Trump because he's morbidly obese, right? which they are saying right now. I mean, that's like a real argument that's happening that um, even as an anti-Trump, I don't like, I don't think him being morbidly obese is a very good argument, but that's the argument that people are saying. So it's like fair game to criticize that. Okay. Then you got to look at the evidence. Who said Trump, like, where's the evidence that anyone is saying this? Well, here's Pelosi's quote from the interview. Okay. All right. What's the evidence that that's wrong? Well, here is testimony from a doctor about morbid obesity. Here's an, ex here's a story, a narrative about, um, a, a president, a previous president, right? Here's a case study occurrence slash story about several presidents we've had who have been significantly overweight and still managed to run the country just fine, right? That's all evidence. So that's 80% of the speech. Then you got your arguments. And then of course you got your introduction and your conclusion. All right, I hope that helps. But this is not a substitute for watching the three videos on how to write the outline. I know it's an hour's worth of videos, but that's, that's your job, right? watch the videos. And if you don't understand, you're having trouble, you're running into difficulty, you've got office hours, you've got virtual class meetings next week, come, if, if all else fails, book an appointment and let's go over the requirements for the rebuttal speech so that you feel good about it. And then the last speech of the semester, which is the epideictic, is easier. We take our foot off the gas a little bit. So this is the hardest week is this rebuttal speech and then we cool off a little bit. All right, get in touch if you need me. Thank you to Lizzie for the question. I'm sure it was helpful to everyone to have that response. Okay, bye.